It's very easy to say, what is a good drug? It has been more than 10 years since a new agent has been approved in the space. They conjured up a novel drug in less than 18 months for pennies on the dollar compared to traditional drug discovery methods. By artificial intelligence, biotech firm in silico medicine to begin a phase two clinical trial. And the company claims it's the first drug entirely discovered and designed by artificial intelligence. What they're learning is how to learn. They're learning how to learn all the steps of the process. I didn't realize that this would be so important. AI's ability to learn incredibly complex patterns and relationships has given researchers a powerful tool to decipher the meaning of DNA, proteins, and chemicals, and explore the vast universe of drug discovery at light speed. How do we make people live longer? What would it take for me to get there? For the first time, we see that an AI-generated drug is actually helping patients breathe better and recover part of that lost lung function that they lose due to the disease. Today, in silico is at the forefront of the digital biology revolution. Let's say there is no medicine, okay? We are beginning a new culture where this medicine starts from ground zero. We would certainly do it differently. So if we're talking about drug discovery in the context of something that we're very familiar with, think of theft on a subway. So imagine a subway line which is experiencing quite a bit of theft by a small group of people or one individual who is disguised in a mask and looks like pretty much everybody else. First of all, you need to describe that thief and pinpoint the thief to the crime. And then you need to have the perfect police person who would go into the subway and catch only that thief and not anybody else. Finding the right target for the right disease is extremely difficult. Especially it is difficult for targets that we can refer to as novel. It means there has not been any publications linking those targets to diseases. But it's possible with AI. Back in 2014, in Emerging Technology Center at John Hopkins campus, we set our first office. There were very, very few companies that were truly focused on deep learning for biotechnology. We were pretty much the first one. People were highly skeptical. So we started to explore which areas of bioinformatics can be accelerated with deep learning and apply the power of deep neural networks that at that time outperformed humans in image recognition, voice recognition, to identify the different patterns in different biological and chemical modalities that drive aging. We looked for dual purpose targets. One is, it is important in aging and it's important in the chronic disease. And we published our first proof of concept studies in 2016 in Nature Communication Journal. We developed our first method focused on pathway analysis called IPANDA, and IPANDA transformed into tool which are currently used by thousands of users called PandaOmics. Why computers and biology? I mean, certainly. And the reason is that biology is full of information. Even a tiny piece of the cell would be as complicated as Shanghai. So every cell in your body has things moving along roads, has construction, has all of these molecules doing things. If you change even, in some cases, just one atom, the cell would die. In order to make drugs, you need to understand how the atoms interact, because a drug molecule is a small molecule which basically interacts tightly with a protein or DNA molecule. Usually you have to screen through hundreds of thousands of molecules to just find one, and usually it does not really possess all the properties of a good drug. We didn't know how to properly structure it and how to properly integrate all the ideas together. We've spent the first year trying out different approaches and we had a fruitful collaboration with the chemistry department to make sure we know what we are optimizing, how we're building the platform and how all the components are connected and how the generative algorithms can help there. When I started doing this at Ancilico, actually even some of the biologists that were working for me decided to quit. They said, Alex, you would never be able to get it to work. When we first presented the, uh, for example, Chemistry 42 to our medicinal chemistry team, 
We were very nervous and had to wait 72 hours until the results were, uh, were out. They said like, okay, th this, this structure is good, this one is also good. Oh, this is something new, we didn't even think about. This is really something you would need to look. And the early uh, proofs of concept that we published in 2016, 2017, were not that impressive to medicinal chemists. Even in 2019, when we finally published an experimental validation of a generative chemistry exercise, very few people bought into the idea that it will transform chemistry. But since it was a high-profile journal, and since we managed to go into mice, people really started picking up on that. So since then, multiple groups have reproduced uh, Gentrol and used it for their work. And there are two ways for AI-driven innovation in pharma. So one is looking for a needle in a haystack, and another one is creating a new needle. So what we did, and we were the first ones to publish and uh, validate, we started employing this particular technology uh, for making, to make deep neural networks imagine new molecules. You can say, okay, I want this molecule to fit into this pocket, but also be metabolically stable, drug-like. So AI is imagining new molecules with the desired properties, and it's imagining many. However, we realize that uh, just generative AI, regardless of how good you are, does not produce enough value. So in order to prove that your software can generate valuable drugs, you actually need to do it yourself. Once you go big and try to utilize your AI for drug discovery, you need a completely different set of expertise. For that, we had to partner with a truly amazing scientist. He managed to build a team of really experienced drug hunters that can take the molecules produced by AI to the next level. We start from the people of three, and we grow to uh, more than 150 within uh, one and a half years. It's a fully integrated drug discovery team. Everybody believes AIDD can provide the innovation and also acceleration. We want to find some novel targets that work on the fibrosis. Our AI team comparing fibrotic patients' data with the healthy people's data. From uh, 20,000 genes, we actually were able to nominate a very promising candidates for fibrosis treatment. And we nailed down clinic as the target we want to pursue. Back at that time, there's no chemistry starting point. Once we gave our chemistry 42 the structure of that tinic protein, and it gave us uh, hundreds of compounds, and our medicinal chemist uh, select 78. And we do the synthesis and testing. We found one molecule, it's our PCC molecule, 055. Now it's in clinical trial. Even though AI provides a lot of insights on what can work and what cannot, still it is necessary to properly validate in vitro and in vivo uh, everything that we discover. 055 showed inhibition in FMT and EMT transition in primary human lung fibroblast and bronchial epithelial cells, respectively, while the cytotoxicity is limited. Moving from in vitro assays to in vivo models, we explored 055 therapeutic potential in lung and kidney fibrosis. Using a bleomycin-induced lung fibrosis model in mice, we administered 055 for 21 days. Notably, treated mice exhibited improved lung function, evidenced by reduced pen levels, along with diminishing fibrosis and inflammation. We got a really great result from the animal model, bleomycin-induced. Yeah. Uh, mice model. That's the turning point. Yesterday we got the 14-day thought data for at least one of our lead compounds, which is really great. It gave us a good therapeutic window. Today we have a, a historic moment. Uh, we can claim PCC. This is the first time people use AI to discover novel targets and also discover novel molecules and get into a clinical trial. <laughs> and when you race and win and achieve a milestone, you need to celebrate. So today we're celebrating. 
right? So let's celebrate first in humans and race to phase two. And right now I actually want to get Dr. Ren on stage and he is the true hero of this. So Dr. Ren, you know, first in human, um, yeah, and um, thank you. Thank you. Combining novel target, novel molecule, is an infinitesimally lower probability of success task. Even without having the main expertise ourselves, we trained AI to outperform humans in all of those areas and create a general purpose engine that allows you to do all of that. I like about this is it was not done by luck. You know, sometimes in life you find amazing things because you're lucky. And many drugs are discovered accidentally. They design a drug for A, and then they find out that it actually works for some different disease B. But here I think it's more the, the method, it's more the procedure, which is revolutionary. Its safety and tolerability as well as pharmacokinetics were validated in two separate randomized, double-blinded, placebo-controlled phase one clinical trials. Clinical studies are conducted in phases. Phase one is usually safety, phase two is efficacy. You show that it works in the disease, and phase three combines both. Biotech firm in silico medicine beginning human trials of a drug development and the company claims it's the first drug entirely discovered and designed by artificial intelligence to begin a phase two clinical trial. Join us. Under four years, we managed to start phase two human clinical trials. It has been more than 10 years since a new agent has been approved in the space. For the first time, we see that an AI generated drug is actually helping patients breathe better and recover part of that lost lung function that they lose due to the disease. Today, we are announcing positive top-line results of ISM 001055 for the treatment of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis developed using our proprietary end-to-end -end generative AI engine. Uh, we do have very nice results showing a dose-dependent uh, improvement in efficacy over 12-week period. Patients taking 055 showed dose-dependent improvements in their lung function. At the highest dose, 60 mg once daily, there was an average improvement in forced vital capacity, a measure of lung function. This means that with treatment, patients were able to breath in and out more easily, while the standard treatment just slows down the worsening. Oh, that looks pretty incredible. Um, and when I say that, you see a nice dose-dependent increase in the efficacy over time. We made it uh, very differentiated, thought about uh, their advanced age and uh, right. you, know, it can, you can drop it and you will still identify it as uh, in Silico 055. And you know, as we design the program going forward, that will be very important to actually seeing effectively what happens as the res fibrosis resolve and even moving into a phase three program and that will be very critical to actually um, identifying essentially and designing a trial that's not huge, that's actually very refined to a population. Really the future is, is for this program is just really wide and effectively I do believe that we'll use it across other indications. Once you combine the best AI and human, you can make impossible possible. It has been inspiring to witness the remarkable journey and progress of Insilico. Today, Insilico is at the forefront of the digital biology revolution. And human health, I think, is a basic right. If a pill works on me, it'll work on you. I want a society where everybody is, has, has self-worth, who feels good about themselves, and who feels good about other people. And I think AI has the option of doing that. That thought that we need to live longer kind of stuck in my mind. Once you crack that nut, it becomes clear that that's the ultimate currency. It's much more important than you know, money or any other resource that people optimize for.